Okay, podcast number two. This is exciting. Uh, getting into a lot. Goose is just loving it over there. Getting into a little bit of more like controversial issues. Um, going off the cusp as well. Starting off with Ukraine. Incredible journey, honestly, for both of us. Not, I don't think, what we expected. Yeah, I mean, if it, somehow people don't know, we uh, we went to Ukraine. It was Mike's idea from the start. Just uh, insane how it yeah. came together and. We went in country and are back home, but we can go through all the ins and outs of that trip because the videos were more designed to be about Ukraine. Now we can talk about the trip. Yeah, um, so the video was definitely something we wanted to make, and a lot of people ask, you know, well, if, if the goal is to do something good, why, why film it? And that's the truth. Uh, we didn't really film us doing the, you know, we took over donations, took over money, so we didn't even film that part. But the reason why it was important to film it and why why I really wanted to film it was because I think it's important to bring light to that situation as much as we can. You know, the reason why people are so passionate about it is because people are covering it. And I, and I, you know, have a lot of respect for the journalists and stuff that are over there and the people that film it because it was really hard for me to even think about picking, even though, you know, my heart was in the right place. I wanted to film it from a documentary standpoint um, and for, for a news, more of a news coverage standpoint, because yeah, I'm a car channel, but I like to do more than just that, you know, and this was a, a unique a challenge for me and, and a, a different type of video that I wanted to make. Nonetheless, an important one for sure. Um, you know, my heart was in the right place with the type of video I wanted to make, but it was just really hard. Like the last thing I could focus on while we were there was filming. Like I just didn't even really care about the camera once we were there and talking to people. And it just, it just became very real as soon as we were on the ground. Yeah, that was by far the toughest mm. part other than having to witness uh, these refugees coming across was like, I'm here to film, tell, them a, tell a story and help out, but it's like, exactly, it's the last thing that's on your mind. And then the videos sort of are a little choppy. You did a great job on yours uh, to portray what was going on. I think it was a very fine line we walked between trying to be selfless and not a parade of like, hey, look yeah. what I'm doing. So, uh, but I mean, that's entertainment. Yeah. No one complains about the news, how they go out there, they have guys on the front lines reporting about a Ukrainian soldier's death and then immediately have an Applebee's commercial afterwards. Yeah, at least we don't have like commercials like, uh, well, we, we do, but it, all the ad revenue goes to our next trip and our next round of donations. So yeah. it's a little bit different, whereas news channels have an agenda for sure. And that's another reason why I think it's great that more, a lot of independent people are telling the stories and are filming it at least a little bit because, you know, we go over there, we don't have an agenda, you know, we don't have to call home and say, hey, boss, how do you want us to spin this story? We're just showing you what's really there on the ground. Yeah, so, it's about as cut and dry as you can possibly yeah, it's make. it's pretty it. straightforward. Now, on to uh, the flight, though. So this is a oh, way less serious dude. topic. Oh. Uh, it was, it was, I've traveled, I know Mike's traveled a lot. I've traveled a lot, like an insane amount, and I've never, ever had airline issues like this before. Actually, I'm no. not used to people complaining about airlines. Like, I'm used to them complaining, but I can't relate. Yeah. And now I can. I know you have a bunch of problems, but this seemed to, uh... No, I mean, we've had little hang-ups because we travel with the dog sometimes, and that can be a little hang -up. So we've had, you know, Gina and I, when we travel, we've had little hang-ups and such before, but um, not maybe, like, delayed flights or whatever, but no, this was... This was unbelievable, what United did to us. Yeah, what was it? The, the very first flight, we made it onto the plane. Yep. And this, if, if that just would have went correct, I feel like the entire trip would have been way more... Uh, it was still a success, but it just would have been way less stressful. Yeah. In, in terms, of it they, wasn't supposed to be three days in airports. Yeah, it was. I it mean, was day traveling, a day and a half in country, and then a, and then a day traveling back, and this turned into a five day, uh, six day expedition. I forget. Yeah. I don't even remember how long we were yeah. out of country for. But uh, the plane, once we were on, it was broken down, and an announcement was made that we had to deplane, and a bunch of people were like throwing fits. We didn't care because we had a six hour layover. In yeah, Chicago. we had six hours to kill, so we thought we were fine. Yep, and. Uh, Next thing you know, this this six hours turns into uh, three hours, then two hours, one hour, and now before you know it, we have eight minutes to get to our connecting yeah. gate in Chicago, and we still there's still really no movement in Harrisburg, and yeah. uh, that was just one bit of the problems. So we eventually got to Chicago. They said, "Don't worry, there's going to be an army of people that are ready to help you once you get off the plane." And uh, Mike was actually the one that took the reins on uh, once we got into Chicago because I just kind of I didn't even know what to do anymore. It was that bad once we landed. So, I mean, look, stuff happens. You know, planes can break down. So that's, you know, we don't want to be on a broken plane flying in the air. So that's great. 
Um, but you at least expect the airline to come out and like have, again, you know, people there to help you at the gate when you land and figure out your next flight. If you were making a connection, in our case, we were going international. So this was a huge deal. Thousands of dollars. I mean, these plane tickets were not cheap and we got the most basic ones you can get. And it was still, um, man, I think about 1800 bucks per person. So it's expensive more than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, I, I still think for sure it was, it was worth it. Um, but and now that we have the contacts on the ground and everything, we don't have to maybe travel over there again. Although I would like to. But yeah. um, anyway, I mean, it, it was not cheap and they didn't care at all. We landed. There was not a single United employee. Um, we found some lady at a gate. She just said, scan the QR code. You scan the QR code. It puts you on like an automated chat. I'm so sick of the scan the QR code. And that goes for everything. Like, I don't want to scan any more QR codes. I hope that this phase of technology is like just a, a blip. I don't like that. I don't mind if we're like... I hate it. Menu restaurants. Nope. Like menus at restaurants. All. I hate it. That's about what it's good for. Nope. But it was bullshit. And, and, yeah. these, and again, you know, this was just insane that they just didn't give a shit. And we still don't have a refund today. We're going to get on that and get called. But we missed... Um, yeah, we missed our flight, so we had to rebook. And and I, I mean, I saw where this was gone, and and I still wanted to, I still wanted to get to where we were gone. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go off on my own and book new tickets, which I did. And thank God we did because we stayed overnight. Next morning, went to like the main check-in counter for United, and uh, they were worthless. Well, that's just, that's what they said. Dumbest they? employee. Like, and I'm sorry, yeah. I get it, but just so dumb, stupid. Can't help anybody. Don't know how to use anything. I mean, they're 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 looking through. They're tapping through their their shit on their computers talking about like, oh, well, we got you this flight. And it got in like two, two days, days later. Two days later, yeah. And I'm like, I want this flight. So I found it myself on, on my Google. Expedia app. And I'm like, I want, the, which is how I book all my flights. Expedia has always been great to me. And I'm like, I want this flight. And I was literally showing him with the flight numbers and all. And he's like, that that won't work. He's like, trust me, that won't work, buddy. Trust me. Like, almost gave me attitude. Yeah. I was pissed because these people just, I mean, I was pissed. It was, was another situation pissed. where it was like, okay, this flight that Mike found leaves in six hours again. Yep. And we're in Chicago that it leaves from, and it, it turned into like, well, now it leaves in three hours. Now it leaves in two hours. And it's just like, all right, two hours. They finally sent us over to Air Canada because we had to connect yeah, we had to, to do Toronto Air Canada. Now. That was the flight I booked, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, so. That, they, so it wasn't any help from United. Like we United was just a complete middleman at this point yeah. to be a And then how, how about the lady, the counter, like we're halfway through. And obviously, like, they don't want to be bothered by this. because And they fucked us over so badly. Um, and obviously, they don't want to worry about it so like we're like halfway through and i'm like no like i want this flight and like this just book us for this flight give me the refund book us for this one for free and we're all good oh, it's no yeah. big deal She's this leaves. lady just walks away <laughs> she just left without a word doesn't say a word just walks off we're standing there about 10 minutes and then we're like she's not coming back is she nope and this dumbass guy is just standing there at the front of his line like not doing jack shit just i mean these people are I mean, it was unbelievable the way United. He's like, she'll us. come back. He eventually had to come over and help us. Yeah, she didn't come she back, did her, and and she never did come back yeah. after the hours. I mean, they were her. awful. They were awful, and and ultimately there was no resolution because I booked our own next set of tickets through Air Canada myself, and we went over there, and that was it. So yeah, so United, uh, we'll get back to them because they were, they they had to put one last nail in the coffin. Luckily, everything worked out once we got there, but it, it was a lot was the only one that helped us. Oh my god, yeah, Polish Airlines was great. Yeah, uh, Air Canada was all right. Air Canada was okay. Canada has some pretty stuff, strict COVID regulations. Uh, and for Poland, we didn't have to get tested to go over there. No. Now, coming back to the U.S., you do. Yep. Uh, so this, our flight leaves in like an hour. So stupid. And they tell us, hey, you have to go get tested for COVID. Yeah. So, and they're, we're like, oh, is it like, because they kept pointing behind us. I'm like, must be a little table behind us. It was not across the airport, I shouldn't say, because Chicago's big, O'Hare. Uh, but it was far enough. And we got there and... Uh, I don't even know how to ex explain this because it's going to come across like we're just whining about nonsense. No, uh, it really was. I'm sure a lot of businessmen are watching this who travel for a living and they know. It, it just, it's an, it's yeah. it was insane. I mean, it was just, it was unreal. Like the, the website, they're like, oh, you go down there and of course, like God forbid, like any human being is doing any job. So they're like, oh, you set up your appointment online. Of course, the website doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Because their grant, she says our grant money ran out. Yeah. That's not my problem. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> That's why I pay taxes so you guys can get grants. I don't know what, uh, it was crazy. Either way, it was $120 per COVID test that United isn't going to cover because we were all checked and ready to go beforehand. Uh, we get back up there, barely make our flight. They guaranteed us that our bags were going to make the connection. So we were stressing about that. We sat in Canada for a couple hours. That wasn't bad. There was no, no issues Canada, in Canada wasn't too bad. 
Uh, Canada had some like different candies and stuff we were able to try, which was kind of cool because we we're just fat, stupid Americans. But flew out of Canada, uh, and we're just getting looks the whole time. I, I for whatever reason I, I didn't understand because this we is like very obvious somehow, and we didn't know that because it's just like we were just getting looks for whatever reason. Uh, the flight to Hawaii to, to um, Warsaw was good. It was like eight nine hours. Yeah, um, mm. one of the longest Long, flights I've ever not been on. Bad. And that was fine. Uh, then we get there, and I'm just going to structure this this way. Our bags were lost, but were found, thank God, just by the miracle of Lot having another flight come in, and we were able to still donate the... Yeah, uh, thank God that, honestly, like, Polish Airlines really did a lot. They were very helpful. And these are people that, like, the English isn't even their first language, and they were more helpful than the United people. So. Yeah, and they're not offended that they have to speak English. <laughs> it's just, like, they were extremely nice. And I don't think that's just Poland. Uh, I'm assuming that's the majority of Europe. I'd actually like to get some opinions on people from Europe where they'd be like, well, down in the south in Italy, they're not very nice. Like, I could see it being sort of like the U.S. where uh, certain areas are, it's like a different culture. I shouldn't use the south because the south in the U.S. is pretty uh, pretty polite. We're pretty friendly here. But um, Most of the U.S. is pretty friendly. Other than that, the trip went well. Is there anything you want to say about us once we were across the border? I didn't know if you wanted to share any of the... Uh... We're flattered by a lot of the comments, but we're not heroic in any way we did something very small still important because you know our small donations every small bit helps and we are going to do a lot more the shirts by the way you guys are amazing the shirts are selling like crazy so that's going to be a huge that could be like a that might end up being a ten fifteen thousand dollar donation so yeah part of the shirts big. go to donation i didn't hundred percent of the shirt that's a hundred percent not all of our sh so the one shirt a hundred percent of the profits for the one shirt goes all to gotcha the, next I, the only reason i said not you guys make the money but i figured like you got to cover costs. Well, I want to be clear, though, too. It's not all shirts. It's that shirt, but it's 100% of that shirt. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you guys are killing it on that one. It's, it's definitely a cool shirt, and it helps a good cause. Um, yeah, some of... Uh, but that's basically all we did. It was very small. You know, no big deal, but it was definitely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. The whole trip was a, was a win overall. It was just, uh, this is the portion where we get to be stupid and complain about the dumb stuff. Now, the thing I do want to jump into is we didn't go into anything controversial the last podcast for the ones you haven't seen it it's up here in the uh the top right you can see the first episode but the issue that we're seeing is that there are a lot of people who are against the u.s getting involved in this russia ukraine mm -hmm. war which i agree with to an extent like i yeah i don't i don't think that we should be sending troops over there to defend ukraine that's insane no definitely no definitely not advocating for boots on the ground or even the no-fly zone i think not having a no-fly zone that's is insane smart. too i don't even know why they're requesting that's yeah. so unrealistic yeah but uh, now I'm kind of taking a stance as being anti-war for, for this, but um, my thing is I have a lot of people coming to me. I'm, I don't know about you. We're there. Like, we're idiots for doing what we did because yeah. this isn't our problem. Yeah, I mean, people – there's there's a couple common arguments you get. I'll, I'll narrow it down to, like, the two main negative ones. Is like, first is the, the anti-Ukraine sentiment from some people. It seems to be more of the, like, farther right wing here in the U.S. where it's mm -hmm. like Ukraine is corrupt – Ukraine has weapons bio labs from the U.S., which is not accurate. They have bio labs. Every country has bio labs. There's no evidence that there's any uh, biological weapons being developed there, and there aren't. That's a Russian talking point. Um, and then the other argument is like, why worry about Ukraine when we have other issues? But let me circle back to the first one for a second. It's like, yeah, is there corruption in Ukraine? Yeah. And even like, for example, in their their Azov battalion, they have a. A, a white supremacist problem in that battalion, which is now, I think, out of emergency, emergency and necessity, as a part of the Ukrainian army. But like that's that has nothing to do with the people on the ground, and that's what our focus was. You can get into politics all day long, um, but the the fact that some people would be like, "Oh, Ukraine has their corruption issues, therefore, like that's not a worthwhile cause." That's ridiculous because. Yeah. America has our corruption problem. Every country on the planet has corruption problems. Um, in fact, I would argue that on a dollar, compared to dollar per dollar basis, I would say the U.S. is probably the worst on the planet. Yeah, I mean, you look at just Nancy Pelosi, for instance, it's it's insane. Yeah, so, she's I mean, worth how many millions, tens of millions, 70 something million dollars, or is it yeah. hundreds? It might be hundreds. As so a, she's either a genius investor uh, or she's corrupt. And I'm guessing it's not that she's a genius. Yeah, it's. Uh, so that's not. Definitely the latter. Not yeah. a reason not to care. That's ridiculous. And then the other reason, just real quick, is, um, you know, the people, it's the age-old argument where we did see some people like, I don't know why you'd worry about Ukraine, Ukraine when we have so many problems here in the U.S. It's like going to a cancer fundraiser and being like, well, why are you raising money for cancer when you could be raising money for Parkinson's? 
doing good doing one good thing doesn't negate the fact that there are other things that need to be be done and uh i mean we donate i donate a lot to charities here uh we both do shane and i both with our business donate to a lot of charities we do a lot here this was just something that stuck out to me that that i wanted to uh that i wanted to do i felt very strongly about it i felt like this was a, a, a crisis that was happening right now and to be honest a lot of the problems we have in the united states is due to our government our government gets plenty of tax money um, there's no reason why people even should be homeless, especially homeless veterans, things like that. Um, but that's something that like no amount of donations, even though I still donate to those things, it's really our government that just wastes money on a biblical scale. So there's only so much you can do. Yeah. That being said, still a worthwhile cause. Absolutely love to help in any way that I can. And I do help here, but just because like, oh, I did some stuff for Ukraine doesn't mean I don't also focus on problems here and doesn't mean you can't do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I don't want to have like a tone deaf approach here, but it seems like the the uh, criticizer has the tone deaf approach where they say like what good is that going to do or like this isn't our problem and Always. it's like well it's it's a good thing it isn't your problem because we made it our problem to go figure this out and do it now i don't i mean that as humbly as possible because i'm just defending myself to sort of these really weird left field uh criticisms but anyway those don't offend me in any way i don't care and I'm sure they don't bother you at all. It's just this don't is offend me. It's just it's a ridiculous up. argument, and it's a good talking point. Like it's it's something to talk about because I'd like to hear in the comments what you guys think. If you don't think that we should have gone over there and done this in terms of like this isn't going to help anybody, uh, and that was another thing. It's like, but imagine if everyone did do that, how how insane this would be. Individual donations are the reason why Ukraine is doing as good as it is, and why this people the people that are coming over the border have money right away for clothes and food they have hot meals they have places to stay because of you know people are buying airbnbs people are donating money for hotels like th that stuff makes a difference yeah. a couple grand takes a family a long way in poland for, i guarantee you uh, they're yeah. this is going to be the biggest year for their economy ever yeah. and this they're supports getting, them they're under attack <laughs> and it's regular people doing it i mean and there's people doing we did again very very minute there's people you know setting up huge donation centers people cooking meals for them they go but, over every week they yeah. ran to someone in the airport who literally went over every week, week with bags days. boom back and forth back so and to forth. say that like oh like you guys doing your little thing doesn't make a difference us alone no but all these people doing it yeah it makes a huge difference a huge difference uh, the, it, you can't and you wouldn't know unless you're on the ground but you see the volunteers you see it happening so yeah it's good that some people at least give a shit not that we are you know are some type of hero but it helps yeah it really does Again, we're walking a fine line. I think my main point is I'm just sick of the Russian sympathizers. Like I've seen people like yeah, I stand like with Russia. Like you guys are, you guys are losers. Like yeah. Russia's the bad guy. You guys guy. are losers. They're, I don't, I don't care if Ukraine's bad. Russia's worse. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. they're an evil yeah. communist country. You can call it whatever you want. They say they'll they'll say it's oh it's this it's that type of government. It's not really communism. Bare bones. Whenever you get down to it, and people are being kidnapped and taken away and, and all this different stuff. It's just like China. It's all bad. That's all bad over there. Yeah. There's a reason their country sucks. And that the West does so well. I, I don't want to get on the pedestal here of like uh, USA, USA, but it just, there's a reason that the way it is. I'm sure the viewer can relate. Yeah, we're not going to sit here and say that the United States is perfect because we're not. You know, the United States has done and does do bad things too, but we don't indiscriminately bomb hospitals and schools deliberately target civilians. Oh, like, you're going to you get know, torched this now. This is ridiculous. I can see it's the Iraq ridiculous. war, Afghanistan comments coming right of now. Of course we've made mistakes. Of course, like, war has collateral damage, but the, the, to, com to even compare, like... Every civilization on the planet has done evil things and has done bad things. But to even remotely compare, like, what the United States has done and what a lot of countries have done compared to what Russia's doing and, and does is a, a ridiculous argument. I mean, an absolutely insane argument, so... I've seen I saw this. I've seen comments that are like I really think they're Russian bots because they're like oh go Russia I'm like yeah go yeah you'll last about five minutes in Russia before your ass is in jail for yeah, something. It, it's it's awful over there. I mean it's just it's it's just awful. My <laughs> what's happening on the ground has been way more entertaining than what we're talking about. These dogs are going nuts over here. But um, my grandmother escaped from Nazi Germany as a kid. The story she tells and everyone else you hear it's just like from. Venezuela, Cuba, all these places, it's like they're not, it doesn't work. Yeah. It's just, it's not the way that humans are meant to live. I saw something on TikTok that Russian was like. Russian people are great. We're not saying that, by the way. They had a. Lot a of uh, Russian people are great. Yeah, there are. And a lot of them are very an against this whole thing. I saw a uh, post on TikTok, and this person holds up like a poster. And they have um, like Donald Trump, Obama, Stalin, uh, and a few more other dictators and leaders, uh, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Vladimir Putin, freaking Fidel Castro. Mm. And they're like, point on this to who you think is the most evil. And 
every single time an American will point to either Donald Trump or, or Barack Obama. Yeah. And it's like Barack Obama and Donald Trump are the most evil on that list. The uh, who was the Chinese one? I just I just said his name. Who was the uh, the Chinese? Oh. You know, uh, Chinese guy. Who, who was Xi Jinping, the current president? Or no, the Mao? from from, uh, from communist China. Mao. It's not Mao. Mao. Yeah. No, it's not Mao. Okay. I believe it. Anyway, is. anyway, he's <laughs> murdered millions, millions and millions of people, and uh, it's it's just like these the. It's insane what people think. Yeah, like, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Like, if you put that on the list, like Donald Trump is indirectly responsible for killing some people. I'm sure some civilians were killed. Barack Obama's, you know, had a large drone campaign, so he's responsible for killing some civilians as well, of course. But like, th that's a great example to be like, okay, who's more evil? Uh, Chairman Mao or Barack Obama? Obviously, the answer is Mao. Like, <laughs> or Fidel Castro or Donald Trump? Like, obviously, the answer is Fidel Castro. Like, yeah. So j just because like some people do some bad things doesn't mean that other people aren't far, far worse. And really, that's all when it comes to geopolitics and, and world affairs. It really pretty much is picking the lesser of two evils because no country is perfect. We all operate in a way that looks out for our best interests. And you just got to pick like which ones aren't the worst. And right now what Russia is doing is horrible. Yeah, horrible, but uh, it, I tell you one thing that it kind of proves is um, Russia's the, like, the boogeyman. It seemed like it was like, oh my god, Russia, Russia, or China. Uh, so China, I don't know, maybe this is like a vacuum in the East where they all kind of just aren't good at militarying. Russia sucks. Yeah, this is a pretty poor display, and I know they're piece... I mean, maybe you guys can light me, I don't know, but it just well, seems like they're trying pretty the, hard at this point. The Russian propaganda would have you believe that they're like doing so well, like this is all part of the plan, but uh, we, we saw some things that we didn't film behind the scenes uh, while in Ukraine, and uh, yeah, the Ru now, I still... Like, obviously, the Ukrainian numbers are a little inflated. I'm sure not that many Russians are dying, but yeah. we saw real things and real footage... Um, while we were there and it, it's uh the russians are getting their asses kicked in a, in a lot of ways i mean they're getting and when it comes to the actual street fighting they're getting destroyed so yeah i mean i i would yeah. how many troops did we lose in iraq it was like ten thousand or something like that i don't mean to get those uh, numbers 10, wrong 000. to be disrespectful was, maybe i'm combining was, the numbers of the iraq war i think and iraq and afghanistan were only like four to six combined what's insane i think it was a little more than that but it, it, it's insane so. we because barely, uh, we didn't take many i mean it i shouldn't say barely it matters if you're if those were your loved ones we were at war for that long only lost that many i it would be devastating in this day and age now i know world war ii and vietnam we lost it a lot but it, like imagine now like we just invade some country like ukraine mm -hmm. and you lose ten thousand troops i don't know what the numbers are i think ukraine's saying sixteen thousand. i think russia's saying around five thousand. so it's probably around ten thousand seven thousand and fifty seven u.s service members killed in post 9 11 war operations how many seven seven thousand seven thousand and that, russia has lost more than that in 30 less than 30 days and look at all the movies and like documentaries that have been made about these these the Iraq and Afghanistan war, and it's just like, and that's over. I I almost said only, and I don't mean that, but it's in comparison. That's crazy. The these numbers that the yeah. Russians are losing. Their equipment sucks. I know that. I, I've seen podcasts with Jocko and uh, a few others where they talk about <laughs> they have numbers, they don't have quality. Yeah, their equipment is all, and we've seen it ourselves. Like you, you should see, like the Ukrainians have stolen a lot of their shit, and it's all like. <laughs> From the, it's literally from the 80s. It is so great watching yeah. these farmers roll up in their tractors. Their tractors and and I've seen where, like, the soldiers run back, like, the Russian soldiers, and they're just like, hey, and that's about it. Like, it's just like, what are you going to do? Like, because they don't really want to, from what I've seen, the Russians aren't very motivated, so I can't yeah. imagine they're going to shoot And you can't blame them. What are they, they don't want, like, this is such a weird, bizarre war. Like, I don't think most of the soldiers there believe the propaganda, especially after they uh, invaded and met with, they were met with, uh, with uh, such resistance. And also we saw... Like for example, we saw some pictures. They they sent a lot of these these first Russian soldiers over and some of these convoys with uh, like parade dress uniforms mm -hmm. because Underneath they thought it. they were going to take. So yeah, so anyone saying that like the people that are out there re repeating the Russian propaganda like this is all part of the plan. Well, I don't think they would have sent their soldiers over there to deliberately die with their parade uniforms on because it was all part of the plan. I really think they they thought this was going to be a very swift operation and it didn't work out for them. So. Yeah. It was, uh, it's crazy. I don't know if you want to pivot off of uh, the war talk or anything. Sure. There's um, the the hot thing, now this is about a week old now, is, uh, I, I forget the woman gentleman's name uh, for UPenn. She, oh, she the Leah Thomas for. swimmer? I did yes. want to talk about this because I mean, it's I, horrible. Yeah, I, 
we have a pretty it's pretty transparent how we feel about it. Not that I give a crap about college swimming, but you do yeah. kind of sympathize with people whenever it's just like they just there's just open cheating that's happening. Yeah, it's like I mean, this is so far beyond anything, and and this really shouldn't be like, oh, well, we're more conservative, so you know what we're gonna say. This should be like. My brain functions properly, so you know what I'm going to say, because this is insane. You have a man who was ranked, I just was looking at it, he, he was ranked like 460 in men's swimming, does women's swimming, ranked number one. So j instantly to number one, which means obviously, but yet was way down in the pack in men's swimming, which means there was an obvious difference between in physicality between the two sports for him to go from number 460 to number one. Uh, doing nothing but pretending he's a woman. And look, I don't have a problem with what anybody wants to say. If you want to say you're a woman or an elephant or whatever else you want to say, that's completely fine. And and you can live your life that way. But when it affects other people, that's that's when it's a problem. And we've yeah. now reached a point it's just so weird. somehow in society where we've gone from like acceptance, which is good, to now in general, it's good and it can be okay. But now we're just, we're just like biological, factual information is now completely irrelevant. Yeah, completely ignored. I, I mean, I, I, I feel like it's fine. You're in America. You can do whatever you want to an extent. Obviously, there's, there's rules and laws. Um, it doesn't stop me from thinking it's a little weird. Like, I don't understand that. And maybe it's just because I'm ignorant or it actually is just, it's just weird. I, I, I see a man up there on the podium. He looks he looks like a freaking dude. He's absolutely a dude. And uh, you just see the woman next shoulders. there. It's like a cartoon where she's just like shoulder slouched. Like, man, I just got my shit pushed in by this guy freaking killing me in this swim meet. I don't know. And I know it, like the argument for the left is going to be like, well, these conservative males, are, they just want to create an argument about anything because you guys don't care about swimming. But this has been ongoing now for how long we're... And I'm, yeah, and maybe I, I don't, women don't like it either. Okay, maybe I'm not a swimming fan, but, like, I still care about women's sports for for the women that are competing Ooh, that's, in that's sports. That's how you defend yourself. Like, I really care about women's well, sports. Well, I do. <laughs> I care. I, like, I want... You know, if I have a daughter someday, I want her to be able to compete in whatever sports she want and have a fair playing field. Absolutely. I might not be an avid women's swimmer watcher, but I still, like, give a shit. And it's fucking crazy. These people have lost their goddamn mind. The, the question really, though, becomes, what is it going to take for people like these crazy... I don't even know if you call it... Because I don't even think most liberals support this. But like these crazy, just insane left-wing maniacs. Like, is it going to take a man <laughs> like the size of like Francis Ngannou to just go in and like, oh, I'm a woman now, and just go in and just murder women in MMA. Just I mean, literally they're going to be more entertaining. In like, MMA. Eventually, we're going to have to have just the crossroads. But will they, will they be okay with that? If Francis Ngannou tomorrow says, I'm a woman now, goes into women's MMA and just kills somebody. I've seen people die okay on smaller hills, so I don't, I could definitely. <laughs> but it's like, what is it going to take? I mean, that it would be insane. I mean, if a whole. But it's not any more insane than the guy who's clearly a man swimming against women. <laughs> Yep. I, I mean, just growing up, like, I, I just can't believe, like, this is a, a thing. And yeah. it's like, it, at the end of the day, it's like, whatever. But it is just, it is freaking it's crazy. That this believe. guy's out here swimming. And, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. And fuck him, too, by the way. It's no shame, either. Like, look, dude, whatever your mental issue is <laughs> where you think you're a woman, that's fine, man. But but you, you have no shame, and you got absolutely no character whatsoever that you're doing this. I mean, that is just disgusting. Yeah, it's just like... Unless he's the ultimate troll and just doing it to prove a point of how insane lefties are in this country. Like, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's just funny. Shit. Just, I get it. You want to swim? Go swim. Go swim against men again. He goes up on the podium and he's just kind of like, oops, I mean, I, I who would have thought? Like, like the I'm, I'm the winner. It's crazy. It's like, <laughs> there's a reason for that and it's just, I, I don't... It blows it's my mind. It's unbelievable that we're even there. It's unbelievable that we're even having this conversation. And I want to really, I'd like to sit, we should have somebody on who thinks that that's okay. And I want to ask them basic questions like, okay, if he just wakes up one day and with no, there's no, because if he can be a woman and compete against women, there no longer is any objective definition for a woman then. Because he's a man, he's biologically a man, he doesn't even, not that it makes it any better once you've already gone through puberty, but he's not even on testosterone blockers, I don't think, he's not on estrogen, I don't think, at least it hasn't taken any effect yet, clearly. Um, so there, there is no then objective definition of a woman if he can be a woman. There's no, it makes no difference. So then why can't I, with, without any other objective proof, say that like, oh, I'm just going to identify as a zebra? And if you say to me, well, you're physically, like, you're not a zebra, okay, physically, he's not a woman. 
Yeah. So I, where, what is the, I want to know the logic. And on that same note, like, why can't I identify? Maybe I identify as Hispanic. I'm, I'm a Hispanic woman. The way that I've heard the argument change, and maybe maybe the, this doesn't, because I'm kind of straw manning here, but it's it's uh, there's a difference between sex and gender, and I think that's the route they take. And it's like it's not a big deal because I'm like, what do they say? I was born a biological, or I was assigned male at birth, or something mm. like that. I just that I don't know. This terminology we're using it, it throws me off. Maybe I'm just too stupid well, to understand it. But I'm, we don't organize sports and physical activities by gender. We uh, we. We organize; they are gendered, but we organize them by biological sex. Yep. They're not like we don't organize men and women's sports based on like feminine more. You're more feminine, so you play for women. You're more masculine, masculine. You play for men. We organize it by your biological sex determines what group you're going to be in. So in that respect, the de the biological definition has to be important because again, I don't. It might not matter in all sports. There might be some sports where you can have crossover, but in the physical sports, like. You're going to have women. Do you think women, do you think biological men should play in women's football, in MMA, in boxing, wrestling? I mean, these are things, I mean, that, that is, I mean, if you're for, if you're for that, I'm all for acceptance. You can be whatever you want to be, but if you're for that, you are insane. Yeah. We, we actually had a, literally insane. I wrestled in high school and we actually had uh, women wrestlers, not on the team, but we would, if you go to like just a one-on-one -on -one tournament, like wrestle offs and stuff, you would there'd be a woman there every once in a while or a girl, I guess, because we were younger. But uh, it was so stressful for both parties because you didn't want to get your ass kicked by a girl because you get mercilessly made fun of, and it was it was tough because if it's like if you just kick their ass, you kind of get made fun of on on the other it's end of the spectrum. Definitely lose lose for the guys regardless. But anyway, that's like that's sort of a little bit different playing field, and I I think it's fine just because it's like there's not a ton of women wrestling. The argument could be made too was how young were you? Uh, Fifteen maybe. 16? 15's a little old. That's puberty. But I was going to say, the argument could be made you could have, like, co-ed sports below, like, 12. Yeah. And it wouldn't be, like, a big deal. But, the, the, yeah, you get talking about biological men competing with women is just an insane... Very insane. And anyone who lets that shit happen, like, the people that cheer for Leah Thomas, you guys are all sick and dep absolutely deranged. Um, I mean, truly... And, and I don't use those words to, like, bewittle people, belittle people, but... Like you're deranged. You have a der you are deranged, and you have a you have a really sick outlook on society. If you think that's okay, because what does that do? How is that fair to the the girl who gets doesn't make finals because a biological man is allowed in there? How is that? How is that fair? I just man. That's yeah, and if it I doesn't progress, like let's say this is like people are like, all right, let's be reasonable here. This just then all of the people who are transitioning or have transitioned can go compete on their own. Like, then it's like, well, that blip on the radar here for these couple of years, like, those athletes just get screwed over yeah. in their prime. Screw them over. They're, they're done. That's, uh, that's crazy. How do you feel about circumcision? Because I know that a lot of people are upset about, uh, like, so there's a couple of YouTubers I watch where they're like, I was robbed at birth. That's a decision that should have been made, waited for me. The, babe, and the was, infant should make the decision? Well, whenever they're wait old. for a while, you're going to be 18, and then you're going to get yep. your circumcision? That's you're what they're saying, and they're very upset. They're passionate about it. I think it's a little gross i wouldn't want to uh be uh, i've never actually seen one that's not so i wouldn't know i mean for i've, I've heard anyway there are lots of med legitimate medical reasons why having us while having while being circumcised all right well i can't believe you've never good. seen it before but yeah, i have pictures it but looks, not in person i don't it know what doesn't it doesn't look like. good i don't know it's got to be bad yeah it, well they say it's like well you need to be more <laughs> sensitive it's like i don't need any more sensitivity down there it's sensitive enough like i don't need to add I, sensitivity i don't even have a thought I, whatever i i've never given that a, i think if you're thinking about like that's a problem in your life like man i can't believe they did that to me i think you gotta have get some other hobbies yes yeah. there's more i'm telling you they're they're passionate about these uh this it's like a big Jeez. argument for these people it's actually the same guy that believes that men should compete in women's that doesn't surprise sports. me it's actually. crazy is it really it actually that doesn't it is. Yeah. somehow now that all makes sense why he's so worried about his penis being circumcised yep gas prices i want to talk about gas prices because i've been posting this on instagram and uh like i'd say probably 90 percent agree that it's joe biden's fault but I do get a lot of people that say it's not Joe Biden's fault and the president doesn't control gas prices. And, and I really, you know, not to, to come from a place of, of arrogance, but I really want to explain this. The policies of an administration absolutely have an effect on the end cost to a consumer in certain industries. If you have a CEO of a company, of, of let's say McDonald's, the CEO, and he's making decisions that affects the entire brand, 
The CEO isn't walking into your local McDonald's and changing the price on fries. But if he's screwing up the supply line, if he's doing, making decisions, executive decisions that he's in control of and messaging in certain ways that screws up like how McDonald's gets their potatoes and their cost of fries goes, uh, go, is going to go up, it would be incredibly ridiculous and unfair to say that he had no effect on the price of fries. That's, that's a very simplified answer to why Joe Biden is responsible for gas prices. So under Trump, gas prices were pretty low in the $2 range. And Joe Biden, they've been increasing well before, by the way, Russia, which I know that's his administration loves to be like, oh, it's Putin's fault now. But gas prices were up well over 50%. They were up $1.30, $1.40 uh, before the Ukraine thing even, even kicked off. And why is that? Well, because Joe Biden ran on, you don't have to take my word for it, by the way, they ran on this. They talked about this. Joe Biden ran on a platform of being anti-fossil fuel. He said it many times. He said, we're not going to do any more offshore drilling. I saw no that. No more clip. shale drilling. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to have any new federal land leases. We're going to make the permits to get drilling uh, drilling leases way harder to get uh, for the permits to actually start. He says this all in like one big clip. Yeah, he says it. I mean, they ran, they, they run, the Democratic Party is anti-American energy. American, en American energy is fossil fuels. Um, so when you have an administration that runs on this and then day one gets in, shuts down the Keystone XL pipeline, which I know was not bringing in crude oil, but it's oil sands and it all plays into the overall production of oil in North America, shuts that down on day one, wasn't currently bringing in oil, but it, it would have. This is all signaling to energy companies when you're saying that, hey, we're very, we're, they are literally coming in and saying we are anti-fossil fuel. Do you think the energy companies are then going to invest their money in the futures of energy drilling and energy production in this country? Of course not. They're going to go elsewhere. Why? Because they know this administration is against them. So all of this plays into the fact that now when you have a little bit like you already had a fossil fuel problem because the Democrats love to love to pretend like Oh, we're going to be clean and green. We're so far away from that. We are so far away. And you saw what it did to Europe. Europe has invested far more money than us in clean energy. And who are they getting? And what do they have to do? Get their oil from Russia. And that's the dirty secret of green energy. It looks good on the surface, but then 70, 80 percent underneath is still fossil fuels coming from people that are bad people like Vladimir Putin, um, like Nicolas Maduro, uh, just to name a few, like Saudi Arabia, which is an ally. But there, there's a lot of oil. There's a lot of countries that produce oil that, that might not have our best interest at heart. So the point is, is that when you have an administration that's anti-energy, of course, that's going to affect gas prices. And that's what has happened. It was going up well before Ukraine. Then the Russia-Ukraine thing happens. It's going to make it even worse because now the supply chain's even smaller. So now it's, it was already up in the threes, um, way higher than under Trump. And it's well, it's like five now. So people are really freaking out. And it's absolutely Joe Biden's fault. Not 100% his fault in his administration, but you know, a solid 80 to 90. And to say that it's not is just, it's not a political thing. Obviously, I don't like Joe Biden. He's not to blame for everything. Um, but a lot of the, the current situation with gas prices is absolutely his fault. And he could, he could fix it by uh, making the permit process a lot easier for oil companies uh, here in the U.S. to start drilling again, offshore drilling, shale drilling. He could do a lot. And he doesn't want to do that, though, because he knows it's not what he ran on and the base is going to be really mad. So he can't. So he's, he's screwed. But that's – I don't want to extend this because we're running out of time here. But it's like you're not going to lose those voters anyway. You yeah, know I don't I mean? get why. So why not just do it to make yourself look good? You may gain even some of the moderate conservatives so that you can go into this next election, not that he's going to run again. I don't even know. That's a whole different Stop topic. not going to run again. But, uh, yeah, it's just crazy. And the people who are arguing against the Keystone Pipeline, you have a reliable ally mm -hmm. that you're getting oil from. Like it's going back to Canada. It doesn't matter. Either way – it separates us from overseas, and now you're transporting oil. It's it's just a mess. The green energy is a mess. Great idea, I love it. I wish that we were carbon neutral. There's been decisions. I don't actually I love it. I don't life. think it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's even good. I like it. I, I do I like, like it. it. I, I think that. I think that. The green energy itself is fine, but I think that the whole idea with electric cars, I think long term, I don't think it's going to be any better for the environment. Than All right. Well, let's say let's say it would be better for the environment. I would love. I would love that. I, I like. Uh, keeping the earth it's irrelevant nice, anyway because we're way far we're so far away from clean energy clearly as you see like they've been talking about it clean energy for how long mm -hmm. doesn't work why because fossil fuels are more efficient we're just now getting like less than one percent of the population has an electric car and already the power grid in california is screwed half the time lines out the ass at supercharger stations 
It's not going to... We're not ready. Not even... We're not ready for probably 15, 20 years. I'm We're rooting for close. Elon, dude. I want him to win. Oh, I love Elon. Not, not overall. But... And Teslas are great. There's nothing wrong with the Tesla. Great car. You can have one. I'm just saying... We're not... We're not even close. And to, and to pretend that we are has only screwed us. Yep. And Europe is the same thing. To pretend that, like, Europe has been pretending for years that they're clean and, and everything's great and clean energy. And now look at them. Now they're beholden to Russia and they're screwed. Which, by the way, Trump called that, like, four years ago. He said straight to Germany's face. He was like, you guys got to get off the Russian oil because you're going to be beholden to, to Vladimir Putin. And then when he does something bad, you won't be able to do anything about it. And look at where we're at now. Yep. So I don't know. We'll see how this plays out here. Uh, we got to wrap it up just because something's wrong with the uh, stupid camera here. But anyway, uh, more episodes coming in the future. Uh, this one was a little aggressive with political takes and stuff like that. But that's probably what this podcast is going to be. It's just the way it's going to go. This is sort of uh, RFR SS 717 yeah. after dark. So I think it's good. It's a good outlet because it's stuff that I don't get to talk about on my normal, cha normal channel. Yeah. Uh, if you're a moderate liberal or a liberal, you're not going to get lampooned every freaking episode uh no. but this is just sort of the hot take topics that are a little more easy to argue for because some people are very passionate about them and it doesn't seem like it, it does, just doesn't make sense to us so we'd like to hear your opinions down in the comment section if you guys disagree with us uh we have our links up top no sponsor this episode camera's dying uh you have anything else to say we'll shut it out That's here it. thank you guys for watching